The video I'm about to share with you will show you how you can create a spreadsheet to track all the envelopes that you sent. can be super time consuming to log into your DocuSign account or maybe just look into your inbox to um, try to keep up with all the envelopes that you might have been sending to different recipients. You don't know who you need to follow up with, you need to keep a track of this somehow and DocuSign doesn't really provide an easy way uh, to keep a track of all these uh, different elements and um, documents that you've sent to multiple people. So you can create uh, external reports in a Google Sheet and that will include not only the status of each of the envelopes that you've sent for a particular template or for multiple templates, but also include all of the information that your signers are going to enter in those envelopes automatically populated into that spreadsheet. And so this is what I'm about to show you now. If you've never been here before, my name is Sofian and I'm the founder of Solution Consulting. I help investment and lending firms automate paperwork. If you wanna know more about how I do this, you can um, book a strategy call with me using the link in the description of the video. But for now, let's jump on my computer to see how you can actually create your own uh, integration in order to easily track all of the envelopes. Let's do it. So today we'll use this additional subscription agreement as an example. It's a document that investment funds send to their existing investors who want to make an additional um, investment in the fund. What we want to be able to do is to track the investors who we sent the forms to. Uh, we want to be able to track the investors who have signed and the ones who haven't signed yet. And we also want to be able to extract all the data contained in the form field of this um, document after investors have signed the form. And so we want to be able to do all of this without logging in uh, to DocuSign. So the very first thing we need to decide is where we want the data to go. So for today's tutorial, I chose something super simple. It's going to be a Google Sheet, but you can choose any other app that Zapier integrates with. Second, we need to prepare our spreadsheet. So I've already gone ahead and given a meaningful name to each column in the first row for each data point that I want to capture from DocuSign. So I want to capture the name of the investor, the amount they subscribed, I also want to capture the date of the transaction, so when they've signed, the status of the document, whether it was sent or whether it's completed. And I also added the envelope ID and you will understand why later. Now we need to prepare our template in DocuSign. I'm going to edit the template. And by the way, I hope that by now you've already uh, watched my how to create a template in DocuSign tutorial. If you haven't, I uh, highly recommend you go and ahead and do this before you continue with this uh, video. And so in the template, I'm going to add a text field, which I'm going to rename save in Google Sheet. And I'm going to make this field non-required read only add the number one and I'll hide it by making it white. So this means that um, the solution that I'm building now uh, will be able to pick up that field when um, the envelope is sent but the signers will not be able to see it when they sign it. If we don't use um, an extra trigger and it can be anything else, or a condition I should say, then DocuSign Z Zapier could um, potentially export all the information sent from any kind of envelope sent from um, the DocuSign account, and this is not what we want. We only want all the um, envelope generated uh, from this template to feed into our tracker. We don't want any other envelope. So I'm now going to go ahead and save the template and then I'm going to use that template and uh, generate to generate an envelope that I'm going to send to myself, but I will not sign it and you will understand why um, in the next step. By the way, if you're going to test what I'm showing you in this tutorial, it's probably better for you to create a free trial account, um, a free DocuSign trial account instead of your developer sandbox account because you're going to make a lot of mistakes and you don't want to burn all your paid envelopes during testing. Unfortunately, you can't connect your um, developer sandbox account to Zapier. You have to use a paid production account. Okay, so I'm now done with the DocuSign bit and I can uh, use Zapier to create my Zap. If you don't have a Zapier account yet, you can create a free trial account, but you'll need to remain on a paid plan for this to work. They do have a free plan, but it won't allow you to do all we need. Their plans start at $20 a month, which is nothing for all the time that this is going to save you. And by the way, you can do the same thing with Power Automate. I just choose Zapier because I'm more uh, familiar with this tool. Okay, so now we'll start by configuring the trigger 
action. So I'll create a new zap that I'll call create Google Sheet row for additional subscription. Then I'll choose DocuSign as the trigger. And I'm gonna select envelope sent as the trigger. And that's why I haven't completed or signed the envelope that I sent to myself first because we want Zapier to be able to pick up the envelopes that haven't been signed but just sent. Um, otherwise, if Zapier can't pick up the envelopes that are just sent, we won't be able to track the envelopes that we have sent but haven't been completed yet. So we need to sort of create two Zaps for that automation to work. So the status uh, for this first part of the automation will be sent and the download form data will be set to yes because we want to be able to pull the information from those envelopes. And now go ahead and click on test trigger and the envelope that I've just sent to myself should be popping up um, right now. And so this is the envelope that I've just sent to myself. So I'm going to click on continue. And then before I add my action, I need to add a filter. And so remember the field, the extra field that I've added in the DocuSign template. I'm going to look for that field by entering the name of the field here. So this is my DocuSign field saved in the template. And I'm going to say that uh, the envelope should uh, contain that field with a value one inside of it. And this is basically telling Zapier that if this field isn't present in my envelope, then the Zap should not continue. So now it's time to set up the action. So in other words, we need to tell Zapier what to do once it's found the envelope that matches the criteria. So I go to my action and then I'll select my Google Sheet. The action will be create spreadsheet row and I click on continue. I'll connect my Google Drive account and then I look for the spreadsheet. The spreadsheet is called DocuSign Envelope Tracker and there's only one worksheet, so it's the sheet number one. And as soon as you select the sheet, you can then map the DocuSign fields with the columns of the um, worksheet. So for the investor name, I'm gonna add the DocuSign field called investor name. For the amount subscribed, it's going to be the amount subscribed, the amount requested. Um, for the document status, this is going to be the, the envelope status here. And for the date signed, that's going to be my date signed. For the envelope ID, that's obviously the envelope ID. Then I'll click on continue. So before I click on test and continue, you can see that this envelope, um, this the spreadsheet doesn't contain any other data other than the headers. But if I click on test, and continue, then the data should be populated. And so we can now see that we have the investors, we have the investor name, we have the status, which is sent. We don't have an amount subscribed yet because the investor hasn't filled out the form. And obviously we, they haven't signed, so we don't have the signature date either. And we have the envelope ID. So now the spreadsheet is getting updated when the envelopes are sent from DocuSign to our investors, but we also want it to be updated when the envelopes are completed so that we can see the data that was entered by investors and also tell us which investors we need to follow up with in case they haven't signed um, and the ones uh, that we need to send wiring instructions because they've signed. So for that, I will need to create a new Zap. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that, turn that Zap on and then I'm going to go ahead and create a new Zap. And I'll call that Zap Update Google Spreadsheet Row for additional subscriptions. The trigger is still DocuSign. And this time, the trigger is going to be um, the envelopes completed and not the envelopes sent. So what I'm going to have to do is um, to go to my emails and sign the envelope that I've just sent to myself uh, before. So I'm going to enter an amount subscribed and then sign. I'm now going to go ahead and sign the envelope as the uh, general partner of the fund so that the status of the envelope changes to um, signed, uh, completed, I mean. 
Great, so now I'll go back to Zapier who should be able to pick up that completed envelope. So the status is completed, download form data, I want, um, I'm gonna say yes, and then click on continue and test the trigger. I can see that envelope is completed and that's the one that just contains uh, the uh, $1 million in commitment uh, in capital. So I click on continue. From here, um, my action is going to be Google Sheets. And the action will be to first look for the spreadsheet row that I want to update because I don't want to create a new one. My spreadsheet will obviously be exactly the same. So that's my DocuSign envelope tracker. And the worksheet will be the only worksheet we've got in there. And for the lookup column, I'm gonna use the column that contains my DocuSign envelope ID. And in the lookup value, I'm gonna use the envelope ID field in DocuSign. So now Zapier knows how, how to identify the row that we want to update. The second part of that Zap is to update the spreadsheet because we've identified the row here. So now we need to tell um, Zapier what to do with this row. So I'm gonna select update spreadsheet row, continue. My spreadsheet is still the same, the worksheet as well. And for the row, I'm gonna go to custom and select the spreadsheet row that we found uh, in the previous step. And so that's the row, uh, this, this one, the row number. And so from here, I just need to map the fields the same way I've done with um, the first zap that we've created, the first part of the zap. So this is the investor name, amount requested, envelope status, date signed, and my envelope ID, which isn't gonna change anyways. Click on continue. So at this point in my tracker, the envelope still um, hasn't been updated. The uh, status is still sent. But if I click on test and review, then my envelope gets completed, uh, becomes completed, and then I've got my amount subscribed as well that got populated. And that's it. This is a very basic example. You can be very creative when it comes to automation. Uh, we could get this information to flow into a CRM or trigger another event like sending wiring instructions to investors who have completed uh, their form so that they can transfer the fund as soon as they complete the transaction. We could also create a new task in the task management software like Asana. And if you'd like more help with setting up your account or optimizing your template, getting more out of the DocuSign uh, tool or automating more of your sales process, then check out my DocuSign implementation program. It's a place where you'll be able to attend a weekly group coaching calls to get answers to all your burning questions. You can also book a complimentary one-on-one uh, -on -one consultation with me when you need where we can take a deep dive into your account and rebuild templates together. You'll also get access to my online video tutorials, which go into a lot more depth than my YouTube videos. So if you really want to master DocuSign today for yourself or for your team, then book a strategy call with me and I'll speak to you then. Ciao.